Hello and welcome back to Pocono Mountains podcast for this Halloween edition. I'm Jim Hamill. It is the spookiest time of the year, even right here in the Poconos. We have several ways you can get your scare on, from escape rooms to haunted candle shops and even a hotel of horror. We'll share some frightening ways to spend your time here in the Pocono Mountains in the lead up to Halloween. That's in just a bit. The Poconos is a year-round destination for millions, and with 2,400 square miles of lakes, rivers, mountains, forests, and historic downtowns, as well as iconic family resorts, it's the perfect getaway for a weekend or an entire week. You can always find out more on PoconoMountains.com or watch Pocono Television Network streaming live 24-7. There's even a Roku and Fire TV app for PTN. Thanks for listening to Pocono Mountains Podcast. We'll have a new episode each week highlighting lots of the fun things you can experience while you're visiting the Poconos. Subscribe and leave a comment or review on whatever platform you listen. Now for some haunted history from the candle shop of the Poconos. Brianna Strunk has more on the place built in 1897 and once home to a biological laboratory. You can even see what's below the floors of that candle shop in person. Then we'll visit the Hotel of Horror again, and the old jail in Jim Thorpe, which still has a haunting handprint of one of the Molly Maguire's prisoners. Enjoy, everybody. It's October, the month of Halloween and everything haunted. This popular candle shop in the Poconos knows a thing or two about spooky happenings, and it's all because of what happened in the basement long ago. Zombies, skulls, and other frightening faces are all part of the guided tour you can take at Candle Shop of the Poconos in Swiftwater. But this is not your typical haunted house. It's not a Halloween boo, we're going to scare you. It's more of a, you're going to sense things, you're going to feel things. Many customers, employees, even mediums believe this place is haunted by monkeys. They've had people scratching at them. They've had their hair being pulled at. Built in 1897, this was originally where Dr. William Redwood Fisher lived with his wife and kids. Dr. Fisher used the basement as a biological research lab where he helped develop the life-saving yellow fever and smallpox vaccines. Across the street from his home, Dr. Fisher worked closely with Pocono Biological Laboratories. Founded by Dr. Richard Slee in 1897, Pocono Labs was created for smallpox vaccine development, and its first client was the United States Army. And that's 300 acres that he built it on. Back in Dr. Fisher's basement, he allegedly performed vaccine-related research on monkeys. Occasionally he would get his hands on gorillas or chimpanzees, but because they were more costly, that's why they were not really that often in the lab. But his main source of monkeys were actually spider monkeys. After Dr. Fisher died, his home stayed in the family for years, then eventually became an antique shop until Linda Schlier set her sights on the building in 2006. My mom always grew up having candle shops and she would always pass this building and she'd be like, oh, that would make a beautiful candle shop. My stepdad, Jim, actually purchased the building for her and was like, go build your candle shop. And that's how it all began. But almost immediately, Linda experienced something terrifying. She was up like on the mantle, just dusting. And she said she heard what sounded like a bunch of animals running around the building and she saw the dust kick up. Linda started doing her research and learned about the building's unsettling history. In the basement, she found evidence of what took place here long ago. The craziest part was the monkey cages downstairs when she was like, why are there cages in my basement? Now, as part of the basement tour, you'll get up close to the original cages where Dr. Fisher kept his monkeys. You'll also see his belongings, including eyeglasses, razors, old letters, medical books, and equipment. You see microscopes, you'll see needles from what they used to look like back then, all kinds of stuff down here. Animal Planet even featured Linda and the Candle Shop in its show, The Haunted, which highlights true stories of animal hauntings and paranormal spirits. 
people would come from all over and just be like, I want to see the building, I want to go in the attic, I want to go in the basement, I want to experience something. Linda was in the business of sense, not scares, but she eventually decided to embrace the haunted history by offering educational tours on designated days throughout the year. Especially right now with all the things with COVID and the vaccines, it's good to have an understanding of the evolution of vaccines and what they came from to what they are now. Today, Dr. Fisher and his family are buried side by side in this nearby cemetery. But some say his spirit remains in the candle shop. Will you experience something paranormal? Find out on the tour. I personally honestly do not believe that the monkeys or any of the spirits are here to intend harm on anybody because we're not intending harm on them. From haunted houses to guided ghost tours, there are plenty of seasonal activities to enjoy here in the Pocono Mountains. Just head to PoconoMountains.com slash events. For the Pocono Television Network, I'm Brianna Strunk. Welcome back, folks. You're watching PTN. This is the Pocono Television Network. As always, we're happy to have you with us today. And we're in a really cool place. One thing I must say, that fall would not be complete if we weren't at this great venue. And actually, the only thing I want to say about it is it's a 200-year-old mountain resort in the Pocono Mountains. Marlo is the person who can tell us all about it. Uh, Marlo, thanks for being with us and thanks for hosting us. Tell us all about the great place that we're at. Well, we are here in the Lake House Hotel in Sailorsburg. Uh, Sailorsburg is located in the Pocono Mountains. And uh, this was once a pristine mountain resort. Uh, but now we use the building to celebrate Halloween every year. So there's some of these attractions, I guess, that we've experienced our whole life. There's so many unique things here that I don't think any of us have ever really seen before. Can you tell us about that? Sure. We are um, a traditional haunted house in the fact that um, we're a self-guided tour with live actors. Uh, but what really sets us apart is, one, our location. We're five floors of uh, incredible handmade sets. Um, they have and their need too. They really five are. floors Thank is you. immense here. Okay. If you see the actual set and how much goes on behind the scenes to create it, it's, it really is incredible. And we are talking about the lighting earlier and what your husband does with the lighting. Yes, um, we actually are award winning for our sound and lighting. You can tell. And uh, it really sets the stage. And uh, our characters are all original here at the Lake House Hotel of Horror. Uh, we don't have uh, Hollywood copycats. Um, the, the actors come up with backstories and, and quite complex characters. They are. We had the chance to meet them um, and take a you know, did. look behind the scenes, which is pretty incredible. And it kind of eased my pain of being here because I'm scared <laughs> to death of this place. <laughs> if anybody knows me, this is just, I had to experience it because it truly is one of a kind. Um, but your characters are amazing, and the stories that they have created to bring it to you guys, it, it's just, you have to experience it. Marla, tell me um, if a guest visited here, if they were from this market or they actually were coming in and they wanted to spend ten, a, a week here, what would you, what, what's one thing that you would want them to know? Um, I think that I would want our potential patrons to know that when they come here, they're going to get an authentic experience. You get to come in and see a building where parts are over 200 years old and the main building is at least 100 years old. And our sets are handcrafted by our staff. Um, and the characters that are here being all original and being so passionate about their job that um, they will be left with maybe not only nightmares, <laughs> but <laughs> laughable and enjoyable experiences from their visit here to the Poconos. And we're so happy that you gave us a laughable experience with Ashley. I, I mean, you won't you ever see it You guys all caught it on camera <laughs> multiple times. Uh, but seriously, we, we really, really appreciate you bringing us in to, to, to tell us about some of the things that you do here. They're great. Um, it really adds to what the Pocono Mountains actually really is, and, and we're thrilled. Um, so we just want to say, uh, for PTN, for Marlo, and for Ashley, and for myself, uh, we really, really appreciate you watching. This is PTN, the Pocono Television Network. 
Happy Halloween from the cast and crew of the Hotel of Horror. Having grown up in this area, I heard many, many stories about the Molly Maguires. It was a really interesting tale told to me many times by many different people. I just happen to be here right now in the Old Jail Museum in Jib Thorpe, Pennsylvania, Carbon County. A movie had been shot here as well in 1968. It was called The Molly Maguires. The Molly Maguires was a really interesting story about immigrants that had come here to mine coal for the United States, of course, and for the mine operators. And it's just a really, really interesting tale. So I can't do that justice, but one person can. Her name is Betty Lou McBride. She can tell us all about that and about some real fascinating things that happened in Jim Thorpe and Carbon County. We're here with Betty Lou McBride, again, the owner of the Old Jail Museum. She knows everything there is to know about this property, about the Molly Maguires, and especially about Jim Thorpe and Carbon County itself. So, Betty, tell us about the Molly Maguires. The Molly Maguires were the coal miners from Ireland who came here from Ireland in the 1800s. They had, had little money in Ireland, they had hard conditions, so they came here hoping to find streets of gold. What they found were signs in the windows, help wanted, great, I can get a job, but after it had said, no Irish need apply. Lots of persecution for the Irish in those days. The men finally found jobs in the mines, and they found conditions difficult in the mines, they had little pay, they fought back against this, these problems that they had, and they found that no one would help them. The fighting started, eventually people were killed on both sides, and the men finally were arrested, held and tried here in, in the old jail museum. So when you talk about fighting between two sides, there were the corporations that owned the mines, right? And, right. and then there were also the, the Molly Maguires, but that really wasn't what, who they were, correct? The Molly Maguires are, were not really a group. There was no organization, as far as anyone has found any records, of the Molly Maguires. There were Ancient Order of Hibernians, which is the social civic group, which exists today and does a lot of, lot of good for a lot of people. But, and they existed then. They were not the Molly Maguires, but the Molly Maguires was a name given to the coal miners so that they could then have one group that they talked about and one group that people could then fight against because they were trying hard to make things better and the coal companies did not necessarily want to pay better salaries or pay for better conditions in the mines. So here in, in the old jail museum, there's an unsolved mystery in cell 17, right? Yes, there is an uns unsolved mystery. And, and the, before his hanging, Th Thomas Fisher in 1878, it proclaimed his innocence, said he was not guilty of the murder for which he was being hanged, and he put his left hand on the wall of his cell, said, I'm innocent, my handprint will stay to show that I'm innocent. And the handprint's been there since that time. It's been painted over, it's been dug out, it's been replastered, it's been tested by a gas chromatograph, but there's nothing there on the wall except the handprint, which is still there on the wall for you to see today. So the, the group called the Molly Maguires, not all of them um, actually were jailed here correctly, and not all were hanged here, correct? Right, there were, there were several hundred men that were in the group that, which was named the Molly Maguires. Eventually there were 20 men hanged, not all here. There were seven men hanged here, four in 1877, one in 1878, and two in 1879. Wow. And the movie itself, it seems like a lot of folks around here are, are really interested in what happened at the time period that the movie was filmed. And um, some of the actors were actually in this building and, and filming was done here, correct? Sean Connery was right here in this building, yes. I'm sorry I wasn't here at that time, though. And Richard Harris and Samantha Egar were the three main stars. They were here in town. Um, the movie was filmed here in the building. The hanging was done outside in the courtyard in the movie. The actual story that it tells is the story of Kehoe being hanged over in Pottsville. This was used as a movie location. Both the jail was used, the streets of Jim Thorpe, and the courthouse downtown. 
And this is just one of the attractions here in Jim Thorpe that, that we feel is a real must-see, but take us back maybe 15 or 20 years ago and tell us what a guest would have found if they would have come into Jim Thorpe. Well, I can take you back a little bit farther than that, Chris. When we came to town in 1980, we went downtown to, to see the Christmas lights, and the only red and green light was the traffic light at the corner. There were no white lights, no red or green lights. There was nothing. The town was almost deserted. At that time, there were about 11 businesses, including two banks, in the downtown. There was no hotel, no restaurants, no bed and breakfast, no attractions, no theater, no shops, and no visitors. Wow, so really the, the, the visitor center downtown in the train station now, we, we see about 200,000 people a year through that visitor center. You wouldn't have found 10. Then the visitor center was there. Mrs. McCartney had the visitor center going, but when, when my children were growing up here, we'd see someone with a camera and we'd say, look, there's a tourist. And they'd chase them down the street and give them information on the town. But there were no attractions in town except for the beautiful mountains and the beautiful buildings and the things like that that were already here. There was nothing for a visitor to come and buy or eat in this town. Well, I think folks like you who had the foresight to preserve um, these types of buildings and, and, and also the ones in town for historical perspective are to be really thanked and congratulated. Um, with just a few minutes that we have left, um, can you just tell us like how many folks have come through the old jail museum uh, through all these years and maybe one or two stories that always stick out with you? Well, I, I, I actually have never sat down to, to figure out how many. We have right now, we have about 25,000 visitors in six months, in the six months that we're open. We started with probably 15,000 uh, 24 years ago. So each year we've increased. Uh, and I presume it's we have every state represented every year. And we have last year, we had about 21 foreign countries. A lot of people from Russia last year. Of course, we have a lot of people from England and a lot of people from Ireland. But the Russian and, and from those countries around Russia, we had a lot of influx last year from them. A lot of Japanese coming in from, from the uh, different side. Um, it's, it's a it's a place to come see of something you don't normally see. You usually don't get into a jail. You hopefully don't get into a jail. And you can see how people lived back in the olden days in a jail and a current jail. But it, it's also part of history. It's, it shows it's the story of the men who worked enslaved and suffered for the, for the lifestyle that we have today. They did not expect to see the rewards of it. We're reaping the rewards of the work that they did back then. Well, truer words have never been spoken, and they're right here in the Old Jail Museum in Jim Thorpe. Betty Lou, so much, uh, we thank you so much for being with us and sharing some of your stories. Um, and we'll be right back on PTN, the Pocono Television Network. The Candle Shop of the Poconos is hosting tours until the end of the month, and the Old Jail in Jim Thorpe is also continuing its tours year round. Plus, the Hotel of Horror runs until the first weekend in November. Thanks again for listening to Pocono Mountains Podcast. You can subscribe to us anywhere podcasts are available and leave a review and or comment. 2020, it was certainly challenging, but now there's light at the end of the tunnel, and that light is certainly bright. Enjoy our world-renowned water parks, classic resorts, breathtaking views, fabulous food 2021 has arrived we are back better than ever let's enjoy it find your enjoyment waiting at poconomountains.com we're back thanks for listening to pocono mountains podcast i'm jim hamill now for a pocono mountains podcast extra some hidden gems in the pocono mountains for when cooler weather sets in including pocono axe works near lake wall and pawpack and trap door escape room an immersive experience that provides some frights of its own in lots of different scenarios. The adrenaline, the addictiveness to it, um, the adventure part of it, the challenge. Yeah! With a dozen lanes for axe throwing inside Pocono Axe Works near Holly, it's the perfect indoor adventure for anyone looking to sharpen their throwing skills. It's a very short learning curve on figuring it out. Everything is about 
finding your throw. And we have a number of experts, and that's what we call ourselves, who are, are really good at coaching. Small groups have been coming out to Axe Works to escape the cabin fever this winter, spending an hour or two taking aim and discovering this hidden gem. It's a new venture for owner Mark Krauthammel, who has roped in some local breweries for weekly axe throwing leagues. We did a fall league, so we've got a lot of locals that come back every week. Uh, we did it on Thursdays in the fall, and, and now it's a, a winter league, and it's on Wednesday nights. And what a community of guys and girls that are, I mean, they're hitting really high scores. From high scores. Ah, uh, error, wrong password. To escape strategies. Trapdoor Escape in Bartonsville has been giving people of all ages a similar outlet during these past months, and it's not the escape room concept you might be familiar with. We've always been story-based, objective-based, so our games are, you know, Cure Z, find the cure, create, you know, create the cure for the zombie apocalypse. F5 Tornado Escape, hunker down and get shelter from the incoming tornado. You know, fear the boogeyman. <laughs> find the kids and rescue them from the boogeyman. These two to 3,000 square foot experiences in a plaza along Route 611 are elaborate and involved. Players come from all around to experience these stories and find their way to the finish seven days a week, even holidays. They say right now we're in the experience economy and I 100% believe that to be true. People have been locked down for a while and people need escapism. And that's what we excel at, is escapism. We create worlds that you can go, you know, escape in. And Owner Tony Prezicki took us on a tour of F5, a tornado escape course where you have to survive the coming twister. Uh-oh, we lost power. There are realistic corn stalks and wind and puzzles hidden throughout this expansive game. And all of it is private to just you and your group. People love that adventure and, you know, the tornado escape. It's very physical. It's very, it's getting people active again and getting them, you know, into an environment where they can really push their boundaries a bit and forget the world outside of these doors. Two hidden gems in the Poconos. One, an escape. Sometimes it takes a little bit to get your, your throw, you know, to figure out what your throw is. And then once you figure it out, um, you don't want to stop. The other a way to release some energy in any season or any weather. Find Pocono Axe Works and Trapdoor Escape on PoconoMountains.com. Jim Hamill for the Pocono Television Network. Hotel of Horror, Candle Shop of the Poconos, The Old Jail and Jim Thorpe, Pocono Axe Works and Trapdoor Escape Room, perfect experiences for anyone looking to celebrate the season in the Poconos. Thanks so much for listening. Please remember to subscribe anywhere podcasts are available. Come visit us in the Pocono Mountains. Book your trip today. <laughs>